Hey, how are you doing? It's Craig Beck here from StopDrinkingExpert.com. Happy haircut day. Uh, my wife will be furious. She hates it when I do this. Um, and she's at work. She hasn't been <laughs> She hasn't been home yet. She'll see it when she gets home. I'm in big trouble. But uh, I hate going to get my hair cut. Hate it. Hate it. Anyway, welcome into the channel. And uh, if you are here because you are worried about drinking and you've stumbled across this uh, YouTube channel or my blog or my podcast, uh, then... Look, before you do anything else, sign up for today's free quit drinking webinar. You'll even get a copy of my best-selling book, Alcohol Lied to Me, as a gift just for turning up. And good news, on Amazon in the next couple of weeks, you will be able to get Alcohol Lied to Me in French, Spanish, and it's already in German, Alcohol Hat Mit Belogen by my friend uh, Robert Bucal, who translated it for me. Uh, so they're all on there if you want them. Today, the headline of the video is... I'm sober, but all I can think about is alcohol. Does that sound familiar? Have you had that problem? It's a bit like when you go to dessert, McDonald's, and whatever you're craving. Uh, so the reason I'm talking about this today is because I got a very interesting email from Lee. Uh, now Lee is doing the program at StopDrinkingExpert.com, and she's reached out with this email it says dear craig i'm close to three years sober from a 30-year battle with both alcohol and weed wow three years is fantastic uh, together with your program book podcast as well as annie grace and a sprinkling of some step work uh, i am solid in my sobriety however i'm wondering if you can give me some insight i've had covid twice and i'm currently dealing with it again my symptoms are mild uh, but with one very depressing side effect i cannot taste anything. Last time I went on for about three weeks with lingering odd aftertaste of sour milk. I'm one week in and I've lost my taste immediately and I'm finding that it's challenging my sobriety more than anything I've dealt with so far. I keep thinking about tequila, white Russians, pink lemonade and vodka. I'm volleying back and forth in my mind if it really matters since I can't taste anything if I test out drinking again. It's all I can think about. Please advise. I'm not, I, I've not done it yet, and I probably won't. This letter actually is helping, but I'm still kind of struggling with my mindset here. Thanks, Lee. Wow, okay. Quite a lot going on in there, and as, uh, as usual, there's, there's more going on than meets the eye. So, uh, there's definitely a bit of the evil clown seizing an opportunity going on there because, like I've said to you before, you know, the reason I, I talk about the evil clown, alcohol is the evil clown that lives in your head, is because he's kind of a rogue tenant. He or she is a rogue tenant. And you invited him or her to live in your head many years ago. You didn't realize it at the time that they were going to be a nightmare tenant. But they're there with your permission. You welcome them in. You let them live there for decades. And only now are you saying, oh, actually, I've had enough of this. I've had enough of this behavior. I want you to leave. And they've said, ha, tough shit, not going anywhere. Uh, and you can't evict them. They, they've got the law on their side and, the, and so on and so on. So this tenant is going to live in your head forever. And that might sound really depressing, but it's not really. It's just that. What you, while you can't get rid of the evil clown forever, you can compress his or her space down to be very painful and uncomfortable. You can starve them of food, oxygen, and light until the evil clown gets very miserable, very weak, very frail, very pathetic, and it doesn't bother you on a day-to-day -day basis. And because the clown knows that it's got very little energy, it's, it waits. It sits and it waits. It's not, going to, it's not going to waste its energy trying to persuade you in a weak voice to drink every day. It's going to wait for a moment, a moment of weakness. And when you're ill, perfect. 
especially if it can throw in some BS around, hey, well, you can't taste anything anyway. Yeah. So for me, you know, um, the, the moment that really sticks in my head, um, I was happily sober for many years. And then someone in the family died. And it was awful. Everyone was in bits. Everyone was devastated. We didn't see it coming. And I was in England and I was on my own. My kids were with their friends and I was on my own in a shopping mall in England walking, uh, feeling absolutely depressed, feeling absolutely miserable. And suddenly this voice appeared in my head and I hadn't heard that voice in a very long time. And it was the evil clown. And he said to me, come on, Craig, you don't need to feel like this. You don't need to feel bad. There's a supermarket there. Go in there, buy a bottle of whiskey, and all of this goes away. And I've told this story many times. What I did is I, I stopped in the middle of the mall. People bumped into me. I was one of those annoying people that just suddenly stops. And I was, I was shocked. I was like, wow, you waited all that time. You were so patient. You waited for my lowest moment. I almost wanted to applaud and say, well done. That was fantastic. And then I laughed and I carried on walking. So Lee, you're three years sober uh, and the clown is still there and is still looking for opportunities. And think back to when you did the course. You've got to separate yourself from this addiction. You talk about how all you can think about is how you want to drink tequila, white Russians, and pink lemonade and vodka. All you want is that. No, that's not true. You don't want that at all. Lee does not want any of that poison. The clown wants the poison and is trying to persuade you aggressively in your lowest of moments that you also want the poison. Just see it for what it is. It's a very clever, very narcissistic, and very evil little attempt by the clown to pull you back into the loop. And as long as you are aware of what is really going on, not what you think is going on, then you'll be able to weather this storm. You'll be fine. Because when you get that sensation, instead of going, oh, my God, oh, I could do with the drink, you don't respond like that. You go, oh, I see what you're doing. Interesting. And it's different. It's a separation. It's, it's no longer happening to you. You are disassociated from the feelings. You are disconnected. It's almost like you're watching someone else have the cravings, like you're watching a play on the stage. Yeah? Does that make sense? So, like I said, there's quite a lot going on in this, in this email. Um, there's some there's some kind of justification. You know, um, people fall off the wagon with justification for doing so. Nobody, nobody ever says to me, oh, Craig, the, I don't know what happened, but I just ended up with alcohol in my mouth. I, 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 that never happens. People always say to me, Craig, I started drinking again or I had a drink, and this is the reason why. They have a reason why. My mother died. My dog died. I got fired from work. The boss was an asshole. I had a car accident. I got ill. There's always a justification. And that justification comes from the clown, not from you. Because you don't want to drink poison anymore. We've established that. The clown wants you to drink. But it knows that it knows that your, your strength of feeling about this is so strong that it's going to need a very good reason why you should. And it will try and come up with an exceptionally convincing narrative to back up the theory that life would be better if you would just drink some alcohol. And here in this email from Lee, the clown is doing something <laughs> ridiculous, but it's saying, look, I mean, this, this, is, this is like a sleight of hand what's going on here. The clown is saying, look, you've got COVID. You can't taste anything anyway. So what does it matter if you drink alcohol? It's not like you're going to be cheating. You're not going to be enjoying it. You're not even going to be able to taste it. So why don't you just test it 
and see if you can drink alcohol. And somewhere in Lee's mind, she's going, yeah, yeah, that makes sense. I can't even taste it. So, I mean, would it even be drinking? You know, it's like, it's nonsense. It's nonsense. It doesn't It's like two plus two equals 27. It, it doesn't even add up. What difference does it make whether you can taste it or not? Nobody's drinking alcohol because they love the taste. All right. We may tell ourselves that. We may come out with all sorts of nonsense that, yeah, you, know, you can't have a good meal without a fine glass of red wine. Funny how we call it f fine wine, isn't it? Why we have to put that, you know, descriptive word before it. We don't do that with other things. I think I'll have a fine Mars bar today. I think I'll have a fine glass of Coca-Cola. We only do that with alcohol because I think subconsciously we know we, we have to defend the indefensible. But nobody really drinks alcohol because they like the taste of it. We say we do. And we, and, you know, and when you get as, dis as far down the rabbit hole as I went and probably you went, you'll come up with all sorts of crazy stories. Like, you know, I'm a scotch lover. I really appreciate the flavors in a scotch. Now, I, I'm not an alcoholic. I'm just a very, very aficionado uh, uh, expert in scotch whiskey. With me, it was red wine, you know? I'm not an alcoholic. I'm a red wine connoisseur. And when I walked into a restaurant, the, the owner's eyes would widen and the sommelier would come up to me and they'd be like, oh, Mr. Beck, welcome back. Have we got a night for you. They treated me like a king. They would compliment me on my palate. They would tell me how wonderful my knowledge of wine was. And I would sit there smug, you know, 10 feet tall going, yes, yes, I am quite important, aren't I? Yes, I'm very, very good at this. Stupid, 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 stupid. They were being nice to me because I spent ridiculous amounts of money on very expensive, attractively packaged poison. I believed all that pomp and circumstance and those pra that praise and flattery because it served my purpose. It facilitated a drinking problem. And that was great with me. The fact that I told myself that story for so long is just shows how stupid I was at that time. So, look, the fact that you can't taste alcohol, uh, Lee, is irrelevant because nobody drinks for the taste of it anyway, if we're being honest. We drink because we want the drug. Your fine bottle of red wine is a drug delivery mechanism. Same as a bottle of vodka. Same as a bottle of beer. They are drug delivery mechanisms. In the same way that a cigarette is a nicotine delivery mechanism, so is a vape. They both get the drug into your system. The manufacturers don't care which one you use as long as you use one of them, right? So, and look, you, you, you can prove the problem drinkers don't drink for the taste of alcohol because most heavy drinkers that I meet, their drink of choice is vodka. When I meet someone and I say, what do you drink? And I went, wait, stop. It's vodka, isn't it? And they go, yeah, how do you know? I go, because it gets the job done, doesn't it? And they go, yeah. But vodka tastes horrible. It tastes like petrol. So it's, it's not about the taste. So let's get rid of that. That's nonsense. The fact that you can't taste anything at the moment is an irrelevance. It's just the clown using a very strange, twisted logic on you to hopefully trip you up. Um, it's it's a sleight of hand. Um, uh, what else have we got on here that I, I noticed a couple of things? Um, okay, look, um, you say here that... Uh, it's all I can think about. Drinking alcohol, it's all I can think about. Because you've got COVID, because you feel terrible, because you feel poorly, uh, it's all I can think about. There's a slight deception going on here as well, right? The fact that you've got COVID is an irrelevance, really. It's, it's just another justification. You know, you feel terrible. No, you know, maybe you're not getting the sympathy you deserve. Maybe it's going on too long. It's not fair. Life isn't fair. So you've got to start looking after you. Why don't you have a drink and just zone out and skip this nasty element and time in your life? 
You don't have to deal with this. Just have a drink and sleep it away. Go into a zombified state, and then you won't have to deal with COVID. It's just a craving for alcohol. It's just a craving, and it's nothing more. It's nothing more special than that. Don't give it more power than it deserves. You're just craving alcohol. But separate yourself from what is going on. Understand why it's happening. And also understand that cravings come in waves. It's not a constant onslaught where you have to withstand it for days on end. The standard craving for any drug it will come in a wave of about seven seconds. It will reach its peak, seven seconds, and will fade away again. All right, so they might be quite close together at times. Well, you know, use your tapping therapy. Use the hypnosis tracks in the members area. Um, use the pattern interrupt that we talk about. Um, use all the tools that I give you in the members area to deal with that craving. Because that's all it is. It's a craving. It's nothing more than that. Nothing special. Nothing unique. Got nothing to do with COVID. It's just a craving. They happen and know that they'll fade away. They don't last forever. They're very short. And if you're using the tools, they'll go away and they won't bother you for a while. Remember, that tenant lives in your head forever. So you're always going to have a craving come at, at some point in your life. You, nobody ever does the course and then that's it. They're, you know, they're skipping through the woods going, hey, hey, isn't everything great sober? You're always going to have to be on your guard to a certain extent because he wants, to, he wants you dead. And you're interrupting his plan to see you dead. He's not going to give up on that. That's his whole purpose. He wants you dead in the ground. And so you got to be vigilant. Uh, and occasionally you will get a craving. Understand what's going on and let it float away. All right? Don't respond to it. Just watch it as though you're the third person, as though it's happening to someone else. Analyze it and say, how are you trying to get me? What are you doing? What tools are you using to try and manipulate me? Scarcity? Social proof? Are you trying to demonstrate that uh, the world is unfair? And, well, what's the point of sticking to the rules if the world is unfair? You might as well just have a drink. Hey, your life's too short. Just have a drink and relax. It's all bullshit, but they're all very compelling. Just watch them as though they're happening on a stage. Don't feel them. Disconnect disassociate yourself from those cravings. They got nothing to do with you. They're completely the work of the evil clan. All right, listen, thanks for listening. Uh, I'll see you in the next episode. If you have anything you want me to address in these podcasts, then email me, craig at craigbeck.com. Tell me what the situation is, and I'll do my best to give you a reasonably coherent answer. Um, and if you are worried about your drinking, do yourself the biggest favor of your life. Go to the website, stopdrinkingexpert.com and sign up for the free quit drinking webinar.